uh, or running uh, they have to walk they have to talk and walk while running eh apa <laughs> So basically, there are few types uh, of how to measure the intensity. Okay, first using the talk test. Um, for the talk test, um, so the trainer can uh, ask or trying to talk with the participants or the athletes while they are performing exercise. This is to uh, indicate the level of uh, fatigue uh, of athletes while they are performing exercise. Okay, for example, if the athletes can perform exercise and talk at the same time without um, extra uh, fatigue or having difficulty to breathe uh, and then uh, meaning that they are at moderate intensity for uh, on the other hand if the athletes are having difficulty to perform exercise while talking uh, and having extra breathing uh, meaning that they are entering the high intensity so uh, as a trainer they have to reduce by the intensity at the um, for cardiovascular exercise, uh, there are few techniques to measure the intensity. For example, we're using the calculations of target heart rate and we can use also the uh, calculation of VO2 max. Then for resistance training, we can uh, how to determine the intensity using uh, for, for resistance training is using 1RM strength test. Why basic stretching are not suitable for certain population is because the intense stretching method use bouncing movement. Okay, to push your body beyond its limit uh, until uh, extend the normal range of motion. So this ballistic types of stretching usually uh, will increase the risk of pulling your muscles uh, and risk of straining the muscles. Okay, therefore we, uh, this types of stretching is not recommended for people from sedentary population and elderly population. Uh, the most safest or suitable type of stretching. Uh, for common people, uh, we would suggest the static stretching it is, uh, as it is more gently and without the risk of pulling the muscle and also the risk of falling. Um, basically, if you are stretching and involving a lot of bouncing, so too forceful of um, movement can damage the soft tissue around the joints such as ligaments and tendons and this also can develop into tendonitis. So, instead of you, redu you reducing the risk of injury through stretching, uh, by using the not suit, non suitable types of stretching can instead increase the risk of injury. So we would want to avoid that. Okay. So what are the differences between exercise order and exercise uh, selection? So basically, exercise order is the sequence of exercise that we are putting together to form a training program. Meanwhile, for exercise selection, is the types of exercise that we are going to do during a workout session. For example, um, the exercise selection is between free weights versus machine exercise. Free weights, for example, if you are want, if you want to use a dumbbell or if you just want to use a machine at the gym. Okay. Uh, another example would be between uh, single joint exercise between multiple joint exercise. Okay. Single joints of exercise, uh, for example, uh, knee extension. <laughs> Meanwhile, for uh, multi joint exercise involving uh, multiple joint, for example, uh, involvement of hip, knee, and ankle. Uh, example of exercise is squats or deadlifts. Okay, and also you can perform a total body workout exercise, which is uh, exercise that require the movement of the total body workout. For example, functional training exercise. And uh, the examples of exercise order would be um, the sequence of exercise, like example. Um, big muscles. You should perform big muscles group first before you perform small muscle group exercise. Okay, for example, you should perform bench press first as it is involving large muscles before you perform the bicep curl. Okay, and then um, you should perform the high intensity exercise or the exercise that require uh, lots of force. Example, um, Perform exercise that jumping exercise jump, jumping exercise first. Okay, then you proceed with a normal body workout, for example, bench press or um, squats. Okay, and etc. Alternating or split routine um, between um, upper body exercise and lower body exercise, or you can also split exercise between agonist muscles and antagonist muscle exercises. Okay. Alright. Uh, in terms of predictions of one RM. 
uh, muscular strength. So which uh, repetitions are considered the most accurate one? Okay, between seven to ten repetition or five to seven repetition to predict one of them. Okay, so the answer would be five to seven repetition is the most accurate prediction for one RM. This is because the the greater the number of repetition that you use to lift the heavy loads, the the more energy that you will use. Hence, the frequency of lifting, the quality of lifting uh, will become uh, inaccurate. The greater the number of uh, repetition that you use to lift the heavy loads, okay, the more adequate force that we use to sustain the loads. This is because a lot of factors involved. Okay, how to develop cardiovascular training for program? So basically, uh, there are few steps to develop cardiovascular training program. Okay, first, we should start with continuous methods instead of start with interval methods. So continuous exercise uh, meaning you perform uh, jogging in a long duration, uh, sustained pace but low intensity. Meanwhile, interval training uh, it consists of exercise with short duration. Uh, have rest uh, rest period in between and probably uh, high to moderate intensity okay uh, why should we start with continuous method uh, continuous exercise this is because a uh, continuous is less testing of energy hence we can do perform in longer duration and it will help to develop a strong foundation okay uh, and then uh, we should first increase the duration instead of increase the intensity for example this week you exercise for 20 minutes only and then next week you're trying to increase up to 30 minutes before you increase the intensity okay. um, training four times a week would seems optional uh, would be a great foundation if you are about to start the, the frequent you exercise the more uh, faster you become fit and you should mon uh, monitor your progress every two three months uh, how to monitor progress we perform a testing for example we do the 2.4 testing or we can do brief test testing just to monitor your progression whether you have increased your cardiovascular endurance or not okay um, usually uh, vo2 max will increase steadily for the first 10 to 11 weeks of continuous training and then you should slowly introduce interval training okay uh, gradually introduce uh, interval training so or uh, between continuous and interval training which is the best um, Arabic training okay so basically the best Arabic training is the combination of continuous exercise and interval exercise so once you can once you are aerobically fit you can only maintain your regular physical activity up to just two workouts in a week squat or deadlift which one is better so deadlift and squats are effective exercise for gaining lower body strength so body both strengthen the muscle of legs gluteus and uh, they do effective uh, active slight difference on muscle groups yet uh, which one is better for different uh, kind of uh, needs for each person uh, if a person who have a knee problem uh, it is um, advisable for them to do um, deadlift instead of squat because uh, in, in order to do the squats, a person need to use the knee uh, to reach the floor uh, while gaining the weight uh, compared to those persons who have low, lower back injuries, they are preferable to do uh, squat exercise uh, whereby Squat exercise uh, can be developed by using body weight and modified uh, functional training. Okay, for those beginners, uh, they are preferable to do uh, squat exercise first, then followed by deadlift training. So for deadlift, they have to master a specific technique that will be uh, quite difficult. So for deadlift, if they wanted to perform a technique of deadlift, they have to master a specific uh, technique which is quite technical. So why knee analysis is important? Knee analysis is important both for the trainer and also for the athletes because uh, in order to do a training program, the trainer need to know the athlete backgrounds in order to develop the physical test for the athletes whereby uh, to 
narrow down to the needs of the sports. Need analysis help the trainer to evaluate the characteristics and requirement of the athletes in the specific sports that they involved. Need analysis help the trainer to evaluate the requirement and characteristic of the specific sports through the movement physiological and also the injury analysis. So basically, each training uh, for each athlete, they have to have their own goals and their own uh, focus. So basically, we started with uh, muscular endurance training. In order to develop muscular endurance training in resistance training, we could use 10 to 15 repetition and about 3 to 5 sets in doing the exercise. So for muscular endurance training, we have to develop a, very, a long duration of exercise uh, in order to sustain the activity for longer period of time. So we could use uh, the load about 40 to 60% of 1RM. And the next is, uh, we wanted to develop the hypertrophy, uh, it, which whereby uh, the hypertrophy that uh, helps to develop the muscle size. Okay? In developing hypertrophy, uh, we could use high number of repetition, uh, such as 8 to 12 repetition, and slightly lesser load, uh, about 3 to 5 sets. Uh, for example, of hypertrophy could be moderate to high intensity. Okay, the next is uh, the next step is we wanted to develop our uh, maximal strength whereby we use 8 to 12 repetition as well like uh, hypertrophy uh, and we could use uh, 3 sets, 3 to 5 sets also. And the intensity of load. Uh, could be higher whereby we can use 75 to 95% of 1RM. And the last one, uh, for power training whereby we need a higher uh, force production, uh, we can use a lesser uh, number of repetition and lesser number of sets whereby we can use 3 to 5 repetition for 1 to 2 sets for power training. Why rest period uh, is important in your training program? So basically, it is uh, the amount of time and rest for uh, between the training program or between the exercise has huge implication to uh, your training adaptation and it depends on the goal of training, your relative load lifted and also your training uh, status. So the amount of rest time between sets will be determined through the uh, example of strength and power, So which is the strength and power training will be maximum to near maximum load will require longer rest whereby if you do a higher or maximal uh, exercise uh, you need to rest longer time uh, which is about 2 to 5 minutes in order to recover and the next is if you do hypertrophy uh, the load will be around uh, moderate to high intensity so you could only have short to moderate rest about 30 seconds to one and a half minutes to recover. So for muscular endurance exercise, you do it in a longer duration and very low intensity. So the rest interval will be shorter and lesser than others whereby you can only rest about 30 seconds to one minute depending on the exercise that you will do. So why rest period is important? The first one is for restoration of short-term energy substrate like keratin phosphate. So we wanted to generate, regenerate our energy after we do a certain kind of activities. And then the second one, we wanted to central our nervous system recovery for maximal power output uh, for technical proficiency. And the last one, uh, rest help to clearing the metabolites from muscular contraction uh, contractions. Uh, whereby for good and bad depending on the uh, on our goals. Okay, what is the most relevant equation to estimate one RM bench press and uh, three two three RM bench press? Uh, generally, uh, Bichel, Early, and Wharton equation are widely used in order to determine the one RM. So, uh, in these cases, three RM is equal to ninety one to ninety two percent of one RM. Uh, beside of that, if you wanted to uh, determine 1RM, you also can use Bripsky 
uh, equation to determine the 1RM for bench press or for uh, squat or leg press.